guys, how's it going? So I have a mile long list of stuff I wanna get done today. I have no idea how much I'm gonna be able to tackle, but I'm thankful because today it's only slightly breezy. Yesterday it was blowing so hard that I didn't even wanna be out here. I just feel beat up when I have to work out in the wind. Um, so I'm gonna start by planting some sweet potato slips. Uh, super easy crop to grow, super easy. They like a really, really warm season and uh, about 100 to 120 days is usually the average maturity on this type of plant. I've grown them a few different years with really great luck. One year I got 16 pounds off of just one plant, which I thought was really good. I don't know if that's, I have nothing to compare it to, um, but I felt like that was a lot of potatoes from one plant. And I'm gonna actually plant 30 slips today. So if I were to average 16 pounds per plant, what would that be? Let me do the math. Whoa, 480 pounds. Let me double check that that's right. 30 times 16. 480 pounds of potatoes. <laughs> Probably don't need that many potatoes, but that's okay because I'm doing the garden to give this year so I can give them to our local food pantry. Um, I can always find people who want the produce. And I might not yield that much anyway per plant. We'll just see. Let me turn the camera around and show you the slips that I brought home. So I've got my cart all set up here, ready to go. First off, I've got this raised bed and potting mix. This is in a bale. Um, I like to use actually the planting compost as a top dress, as a mulch in my flower beds. This one I'm gonna use to fill the raised beds because I filled them last year and then they settled a little bit. So I've got a little lip on top of the raised beds that I'd like to fill. Here are the sweet potatoes, two different varieties. This one right here is called Covington and you can see that it has kind of a heart-shaped leaf. So I've got 20 slips. This is what they look like. Let me put them on the ground, easier to see. So that's what they look like, just bundled together like that. They're already rooted a little bit. And then these ones are called Diane, and they have a different shape leaf. See, they're like heavier lobed, deeper lobed. So Covingtons are a type that have kind of a reddish orange skin with a rose colored flesh. They're very sweet and really high yielding, 100, and 100 to 115 day maturity. The Dianes are a yam type sweet potato, so they have darker orange flesh very moist flesh and sweet. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to try both kinds and just see how they do. They always come in looking a little bit sad. Um, in fact, these look better than what we get most years. Most years they've got like black leaves from shipping, like they got a little bit nipped uh, by some cold when they were being shipped. Uh, so these actually look really good. Okay, let me load them back up and we'll head to the raised beds. So this is the back of the greenhouse and then those are the raised beds right here. We've got one three by four, one three by six. They get plenty of sun back here. In fact, in just a, an hour or so, this whole bed will be in sun. So I think they'll do really well back here. And if you've never grown sweet potatoes before, they actually grow, they're in the same family as the ornamental sweet potato vines we put in our containers. They trail everywhere. And if they're happy, they will tr They will like go forever. Um, in fact, I had them grow out of a raised bed, cross a walkway, and up a chain link fence down at the garden center one year. They did so good. So I think that back here is a really good place to put them because they can just trail wherever they want. I'll try to keep them, you know, off the fence line that I share with my neighbors. Um, but I don't care if they go all over the ground back here. So I'm going to start by adding some of this raised bed potting mix. So I'm gonna to wanna to plant these sweet potatoes about a foot apart from each other, which means um, I will do three rows and probably get about, oh, I don't know, six or seven in this one per row. We'll see how many it fits. And then three rows in this, and then we'll see. Okay, so I can fit all 30 of them in. I've got uh, 18, let's see, three rows of six, so 18 Covingtons in this bed. Then I had to put a couple of them in this bed along with the Dianes. And I've got all 10 Dianes in here. So they're really quite easy to plant. You can see that they've got a root mass down here and then a really long stem before uh, their leaves start. But if you look along the stem, you can see at a node or where a leaf usually comes out of the uh, stem. In fact, you can see a leaf kind of forming. Let's see if I get that to focus. There's a leaf forming right up there. There's also a root. So wherever you bury one of these nodes or junctions, roots will also form, which can help uh, produce more tubers and make a stronger plant because it's able to suck up more moisture and nutrients. So very easy to plant. You just make a nice deep hole and then just fill in right around it. Just like that. Super easy. All right, we'll do it again. 
So you can see all the roots and look at the roots forming up along the stem here. And there will be more if it's introduced to a little bit of moisture. So nice deep hole, pop it in, fill in around. Easy peasy. All watered in and I think they look really good. I'm really hopeful about this crop. So like I said, sweet potatoes range mostly from 100 to 120 day in maturity. Like the Covingtons here, I believe are 100 to 115 day and the Dianes are between 100 and 120 day. So basically the same time frame, which puts my harvest right about the end of August. So basically I'm just gonna be watering this with a hose. That's my plan this year, just because they're right behind the greenhouse. I have to water the stuff in there anyway. Um, I do have drip that runs back here. In fact, I just ran it to these arborvitas. These are the North Poles we planted two years ago. We planted these last year. Uh, I ran drip to them yesterday actually. So I had to tap into our line of arborvitas there. I trenched along the side of the greenhouse. This is what I did in the wind yesterday all the way along you can kind of see some of the tubing i didn't have enough rocks to cover it and then it elbows here and it takes off down this fence line and then i've got two emitters going to each one of these arborvitas finally so i don't have to water those with the hose at least if i find for some reason that these are just drinking up the water like crazy i can always tap into the drip that's right below and then just run some quarter inch uh, soaker hose into these beds so that they get watered every day that's how often we have to water these arborvitas in the heat of the summer um, but i don't want them to be watering them that often right now so i'm just going to do it by hand for the time. All right, I'm gonna clean up all this stuff and move on to the next project. Do you guys remember last year when I had all of the marooned coleus and then the white supertunias planted in this bed? So I'm gonna do something extremely similar because I loved it so much. I'm gonna go back in with marooned coleus and then in front, I'm gonna do lemon coral sedum. So a little bit different, but kind of the same. I just can't help but plant these together. They are so beautiful together. Look at that contrast. And I think they're gonna both really like this spot. So I'm gonna fill this whole section in with a maroon coleus. You can see I still have some tulips there, so I might pop one of the coleus kind of down in uh, the middle of those, but I'll leave the uh, foliage until it starts to die back. There are a couple aronia in here, which I may or may not leave there. I'll probably leave them for this season and then see how they do. And then this whole edge is gonna be lemon coral sedum. The rest of this area, I've got, you know, the boxwood hedge starting to grow in. Midnight Masquerade uh, Penstemon, which I planted in a vlog last year, and it is just going nuts. There's an old, like, heirloom rose right there. Uh, there's one white echinacea, which I'd like to kind of get rid of some of these anemones right here and plant more white echinacea. I've got dark purple delphiniums that'll fill in this spot and then Japanese anemones that just kind of have taken over a little bit. Uh, so anyway, here we go. Oh, that is gonna look gorgeous. I think that that looks absolutely wonderful. I love the contrast and I love that there's a band of red in here because there's just so much green. And that's the whole reason why I planted this specific type of penstemon too, is that it had a little bit different look to its leaf, even though it's kind of a mix between green and red. It was enough contrast to make it like more of a permanent plant solution in this area because of course the coleus is annual, but it just packs such a punch in the color department that I just can't help but just kind of save spots for specific annuals like this. And I think the lemon coral is gonna be super pretty. It just looks so cushiony and soft up there. And once all of this fills in and it's like color blocks, I think it's gonna be awesome. All right, so I just took a little bit of a break so I could get a bunch of things watered. I still hadn't done that today. And then I watered in the new area. Um, and then I remembered that somebody asked me what my favorite watering wand was. So let me turn the uh, camera around and I'll show you what it is. So this right here is a dram water wand and it's my absolute favorite. I have one on the end of every single hose that I have here at the house. And this is what we use down at the garden center as well. And the types of on off have kind of changed throughout the years. This one's really nice. It just like turns on with your thumb and off. Really, really simple. Right up here is the last project I wanna work on today these containers huh, there's a pair of my shoes they were too muddy to take inside so i had hellebores in here that i planted way early this year um in fact i think it was maybe like beginning of february i'll have to look back but i've got three hellebores in this container three in this one so all six of these 
and the two iron urns are the same variety. And then I've got one, do I just have one in here? Yeah, just one. So I think that this one's a pink frost and then these are or ivory prints or something like that. I can't remember. I had it in a vlog. I don't think they're ivory prints. I'll have to look back and check. Anyway, I'm going to take them out because obviously they are past their prime. They're all bloomed out. Uh, they did really well in these containers, but this is what I'm going to put in them. Oh, isn't that so pretty? These are two autumn frost hostas and I think I'm just going to put these alone in the urns. And then this one I'm just going to clean out and put away for now. I brought my muck tub up here so that I could put the hellebores in this to transfer them to the spot out in the garden. And then some more soil to fill the urns. Yeah. Here we go. We have to break for a second for a special guest. <laughs> hey Benjamin. Hi my little mohawk baby. <laughs> you need to quit thrashing your head around so much so your hair will grow back in those spaces. You are so cute. I know, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, that is so gorgeous. Oh my word. Oh. So what do you guys think? I think these hostas are awesome. Of course, I'll probably want to do another little something there, and I've really got it. I'm kind of embarrassed. Like, don't look too close at this. So dirty over there. I need to clean that up and bring some plants out so I've got some more color. Probably bring a new wreath out that's got a little bit more color to it. Um, but I just like how cleaned up this area looks and how fresh those plants are. The other benefit of using something like this autumn frost hosta in containers is that I can enjoy it in here, then I can plant it out in the landscape later. So it's a twofer um, in that, I mean, one plant to fill that pot, that's it. Like budget wise, picking a perennial that's large to fill a pot and then to plant in the landscape is a really good idea. Okay, so my last thing I've got to do today um, before I'm just gonna wrap it up is get all of these hellebores planted. So let me take you to the spot I'm gonna put them. Okay, so this is where the hellebores are gonna go. We're in the front yard. You can see the driveway with the hay racks we just planted up. And if I swing this way, you can see the Hebe fountain and the house just for point of reference here. And Russell. But I thought it would be really kind of neat to tuck these hellebores underneath the blue spruce canopy here. Kind of like just a little surprise plant under there. Not much else would really do well. Maybe hostas would do okay under there, but I think the hellebores will do really, really good. So I'm just gonna kind of tuck them right in this section right here. There's already drip tubing, which is really handy. See that black tube right there? I ran that last year so that I could put drip line to these boxwoods and these are quick fire hydrangeas right there. So it'll be easy to tap into that and run drip to these hellebores. So I'll get those in the ground. Here they are. There's six of them. Those are the six that were all the same variety. So they're just tucked in underneath that canopy and I think they're gonna look so pretty. They don't look like much now, but they will. So I just have this one last hellebore to find a home for. I think this is a perfect spot right here. There's already two hellebores of different varieties right there. So I'll just put it right in that spot. Oh, sorry, Russell. That's perfect. So see, there's one, two, three now, and there's enough room to ring some kind of nice like hookera or some blooming annuals right in there. So excited. All right guys, so that is it for today's video. The only things I have left to do are to water in the hellebores and then I have a few other things outside I need to water, but then I'm gonna wrap it up and go in and hang out with Benjamin and Aaron. 
Um, so anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.